Our uh, next speaker is Judith Lickman, uh, who is Susan Dwight Bliss Professor and Chair of Chronic Disease Epidemiology at Yale School of Public Health and Director of the Humanities, Arts, and Public Health Practice at Yale, or HAPI, initiative. Uh, Dr. Lickman's research focuses on examining the epidemiology of stroke and heart disease using longitudinal databases and prospective observational studies. She has served on several national committees related to cardiovascular and cerebrovascular disorders and has been a member of the program committee for the American Heart Association Conference on Cardiovascular Disease, Epidemiology, and Prevention, and has served on numerous National American Heart Association and American Stroke Association writing committees. She was the recipient of the C. Miller Fisher MD Neuroscience Visionary Award from the AHA and the ASA in 2018, and is a graduate of the Drexel University Executive Leadership in Academic Medicine program. Dr. Lickman has been the principal investigator for projects funded by the Goddess Foundation, the Fannie E. Ripple Foundation, the American Heart Association, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, National Institute on Aging, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. All right, well, thank you. So I have to say, I mean, it's wonderful to, to revisit some of those accomplishments, but I wanna say I'm a graduate of the, of the program here. And so um, I have to say my area was in epidemiology. I have been living the past little while uh, across the bridge over in the School of Public Health and around the Medical Center. And what's really fun about coming today and hearing that incredible project is that um, I've always had roots in music and dance and, and art. And I sort of feel like I'm enjoying a treasure hunt across campus, finding out about and really trying to build something that, that goes beyond sort of my area, but to really extend across the different arts and disciplines. So what I want to do today is talk a little bit about the vision of what it is I'm trying to build and we're in process. Um, share with you a course, and a new course that's coming out this spring that we're really excited about, and then just tell you about one or two projects. And again, I'm very interested in hearing about potential collaborations or opportunities because it's really exciting to see where you are in your, your own career development. And I have to say, Yale is an amazing space. Um, as I said, I've been here a little while and I'm still exploring new, new territory, so it's a lot of fun. So what we really want to do with the HAPPY Initiative is, is develop an interdisciplinary program that really builds on health, the arts, and humanities, looking at all of the rich resources across Yale. Um, we're basing it in the School of Public Health, that's my hub, and we really are giving it more of a public health perspective, how to enhance the health of communities through understanding uh, important public health issues, but how can we translate it and communicate it through the arts. Um, and so, uh, one of the things we have sort of a three-pronged approach. We want to have collaboration, which is what's exciting here to sort of see what everybody's doing, to really build collaborations to eventually establish a center that focuses on this with um, certainly invited scholars, having guest artists, and really having a, a, a good hub for these kinds of conversations. We also want to have education to really train everybody to use is there, interdisciplinary arts to promote community health. Um, and we are working on a, a, a track within my school, but also thinking across campus. Um, and then research, um, that's, as you heard, a bit of my hub, is to really conduct research that evaluates and comes up with how to measure outcomes of art-based programming. So how can we improve community health and prove that a lot of this exposure is really going to improve uh, an individual's health and, and, and the overall health of their community? So one of the things, and I'm sure many of you are from different areas here, part of what is really fun, and as I said, the treasure hunt, is to sort of build collaborations. And we've been doing that very effectively so far. We've been working with individuals. I should change it now from School of Drama to the, the Geffen School. So it's a little bit older, sorry. But what is interesting is, you know, again, how many schools are under our umbrella, but also we think about all of the other art galleries, museums, libraries, everything else that are just so rich to Yale, to be thinking about how can we incorporate programs and conversations 
conversations that really bridge across these disciplines. Um, one of the collaborations that we're really excited about is we've been working with Garth Ross and Jennifer Newman, thinking about um, using uh, and working with the Schwarzman Center. For me, as I said, sort of being over in the more medical campus, it really is a wonderful environment. I'm sure many of you have already been there. You've seen the beautiful new resources. Um, but it's amazing that the dance space, the the um, all the different areas and technologies that we're hoping to take advantage of to really immerse ourselves in the work and also display so many of the different arts that are available. Um, and it really provides a unique lens into public health and the arts by being able to have conversations that, that bridge. And I'll talk about one or two of those. Um, Tyga Christie, who was a graduate of our MPH program in the social and Be behavioral sciences, is what is, con is an inaugural Schwarzman Fellow. What that means is it's really exciting for us. I mean, she knows the disciplines of our work, um, but she also is really having important conversations and introductions for us within the Schwarzman Center to be able to think about developing programs uh, and events that really are dedicated to this intersection and can also um, introduce individuals across campus. Um, the uh, we feel that we're also helpful to the Schwarzman Center's mission of, of building a sense of belonging by providing some of these unique uh, opportunities to discover and connect. And one of the themes that we're working on right now is a theme of sleep. We all need sleep. It's one of what we call sort of the, the, the three uh, pillars of a stool. You know, you need to eat, you need to uh, exercise, you also need to sleep. Um, and what's fun about this is we've been starting to have conversations where we've been bringing together the experts in sleep, who can talk about what you do when you sleep, uh, brain cleansing, circadian rhythms, all the things that are really important for your health. We're also talking with, for example, individuals from the Geffen uh, School of Drama, where we're talking about safety issues, shift work, how does that work? We're also talking with individuals about equity of sleep, who, who has good sleeping environments. We're working with professors and individuals from the School of Architecture, what is the ideal sleeping environment? So we are starting to think about not only the, the broad range of importance of sleep and how well it's connected. We're thinking about um, plays and music, all that have showcased the importance of sleep and the detrimental issues related to not having adequate sleep. And of course, for all of us, whether it be uh, graduate student level or faculty level, we know there, there are important times when we are not getting enough sleep and we have to think about how that impacts health. So um, stay tuned. We're planning quite a few events that we will be bringing across campus to really think about that and showcase it. Um, I'm also really excited when we think about um, this kind of approach, we have a incredible collaborator that I was fortunate to be introduced to about a year and a half ago, Dr. Neil Baer. He's a physician, author, and award-winning showrunner and television writer producer. Uh, he is very passionate about public health, uh, being an advocate, and he really uses media to tell impactful stories. And so he works from the approach that you need to have it uh, based in science and evidence, but then you really have to trigger an emotional response response to things. It's not just about the numbers, but how do you really uh, invoke the emotional response to really want to drive change and end policy? So again, I, I would, uh, his list is very long, but um, again, I think for us, it's really exciting to be working with someone who is very visionary and really wants to connect all of the dots and think about effective storytelling, because that for us is a public health uh, discipline and through many of the other arts is really important and compelling. I also want to mention Karen Deary, who's here, who's really the hub of making sure we connect with everybody across campus. So let me just, so that's uh, collaboration, education. We really are trying to think about the multidisciplinary courses that take advantage of understanding public health issues um, from the perspective of the science, as well as how they might be displayed to have been historically and how they might be used to really raise awareness and um, invoke change. So I want to talk about my inaugural happy course in just a minute, but that's the, as I said, collaboration, education, um, and then research. We really want to build, build an evidence base for ethical, practical use of arts and humanities to improve health outcomes. It seems obvious, but there really is an important gap in the field. And what's really exciting from my perspective is that um, 
organizations like the National Institutes of Health are really recognizing this importance, and there are now requests for funding announcements. For example, I'm working with um, Dean Robert Blocker from the School of Music. There are new RFAs, requests for funding announcements, that are very much related to brain health, music, all aspects of recovery. As mentioned, I'm very interested in stroke, so stroke recovery is something uh, that's very interesting to me to understand how music and dance are very, very helpful in recovery. Um, and then part of what's important, and I've heard this from uh, Garth from uh, Schwarzman Center, who spent a lot of time uh, down at the Kennedy Center for Arts, is we also need to be thinking about how do you evaluate the impact. And there really is a lot of work methodologically to do. So let me just take a couple minutes and talk about the course that we're planning. So this is a picture of the historical library over at the medical school, which is going to be very much involved in our course. We really want to challenge our students to explore the possibilities, problems, and potential uses of arts and humanities in public health. So we're planning field trips all around the campus. We've already talked with um, uh, one of the art historians. We're going to pull out a lot of materials uh, that have been historically uh, provided, whether it be um, how things have been recorded, how things have been relayed in um, advertisements, so that we really are building conversations uh, around particular themes. Um, we want to really look at expertise across campus. I'm going to show you pictures of other places we're going to go on our field trip. And we really want to think about methodologies, not only study design and things like that, but how do we really um, think about the impact of some of these things on our own perceptions and how will we utilize these to think about um, community health. Um, here we expect to be going to the libraries, I mean the museums, uh, to really take a look at how some public health themes have been relayed in art. Um, and so the format, which is very different for me, is uh, we're going to have sort of two sessions a week. One will be more lecture-oriented content area. The other one's going to be very hands-on. It's going to be going to, as I said, some of the libraries, some of the museums. We have some concerts picked out, some performances, so that we're really trying to reflect on how these two are both integrated and sometimes not integrated. Um, we're going to really focus on ethics and problems since art and health work, storytelling, social cohesion, and medical humanities and social sciences to kind of build this methodologic base. And then we're really going to be thinking about what are some of the important public health themes that we want to get across. So some of them, for example, might be things like climate change, disaster and humanitarian aid, opioids and harm reduction, violence and gun violence, sleep and health disparities, uh, mental health, HIV AIDS, the built environment and health disparities, health impact of incarceration, which was wonderful to hear. And um, we'll be working with one of my former students, Byron Kennedy. I don't know if you've met him, uh, who who's very involved in, in the uh, medical system for the prison systems in Connecticut, and then neuroscience and the arts. And I just want to mention that part of this also is to look at plays. This is actually a scene from a play that was written, directed, and produced by, uh, as I mentioned, Tyga Christie, who is our fellow. And it was an important piece in that it really looked at the um, stress of uh, frontline workers, EMS workers. She did uh, qualitative work to understand the issues. She developed a play, and then it was shown to uh, EMS workers and their families, and it led to very important discussions about many of those issues. Um, the assessments that we're going to do, which is a little different, is weekly reading reflection. So we really want people to think about their response to a lot of these issues so that um, we really want people to come up with um, where these things connect in their own lives. We want individuals uh, to create a manifesto, sort of a value assignment that's a kind of a living document uh, that will grow with the work that they do. And then we really want a final project, which is to create an arts or humanities inspired intervention on a specific health topic. Um, I'm also showcasing here, we talked about music. This is one of our former students who also um, had a wonderful series of recitals uh, during her time here. Um, so that's the course. A couple things that we have put together just to give you an idea is we um, hosted uh, Dr. Neil Baer, um, had been the executive producer for a documentary, Welcome to Chechnya, uh, which was uh, 
a powerful David France documentary about anti-gay purges in the late 2010s um, for LGBT refugees. Um, they were wearing hidden cameras, made their way out of Russia through a network of safe houses. And it was really amazing. It was uh, nominated. It was on the short list, I should say, for um, an Oscar. It won a special jury at Sundance. Um, what was interesting about it is that we put together a panel, which uh, was Neil Baer. We also had our uh, dean, John Pachankis, who's an ex, really his area is an LBGTQ health. Um, Leosha Gorshov, who's also in academics, but has been a, a, um, a refugee and also a, um, a lawyer, Deirdre Stradone, who is an expert in getting people asylum. So it was really, we provided the um, documentary, we gave people time to look at it, and then we really put together a panel that we thought could get at some of the, the issues, the social, political um, issues that we thought would be really important. Um, we also, and it was wonderful to see the readings that and the letters that you were describing, um, <clears throat> we put together a pandemic archive and it's been very interesting. We, we uh, opened it up to the Yale community and beyond and got wonderful contributions about people's responses uh, and impressions and thoughts about what their lives were like during that time, which we think, as, as you were hearing, is a really important expression um, and, and uh, way for many people to think about um, getting through what was such a difficult time. And then uh, some other things we've done, uh, we uh, provided opportunity for, uh, we invited a group of students and staff across uh, the whole campus to view a play, Do No Harm, um, that was really around the stories of three enslaved black women uh, and the medical experimentation that they uh, endured and suffered through. Um, and following the screening, we had a conversation with the playwright um, and the play commissioner and really had a very uh, wonderful dialogue about many of the issues that were involved. Um, and then finally, we have a couple things in process. I mentioned um, Tyga Christie's work, Counting Pebbles, but we also um, are currently working, uh, and she's leading the initiative on an original play about climate change communication in the context of COVID. We got funding from an outside uh, foundation for that, and we're also going to be hosting uh, a touring performance of Ezel uh, in the spring. So let me stop there. Um, and just say, please, if there are interests, contact me. I would love to. We're very much at the early stages of developing something. And uh, all ideas and energy is welcome. I'll start. Um, so obviously, the, the research itself will have an impact on the community. Are there ways in which you're thinking about involving the community in some of this work? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think for us, there uh, by having some of the plays go out in the community is certainly one of those aspects. But yes, we're thinking about um, some of the collaborations and some of the projects that we want to do. Very much, we feel that we want to engage individuals in the community so that it feels like not only is it nested here, it's nested in New Haven. We have been thinking also about any kinds of uh, work that we could um, think about. So one of the things we've been thinking about is sort of a toolkit where we go out into the community on thematic issues and really talk with individuals, get their impressions. What are some of the challenges around this issue? So we would definitely go out to thought leaders, um, individuals who are in environment situations, much like I think, you know, yours was a perfect example. And part of what we've been talking about is trying to prepare a toolkit that you put together some of the key messaging. And we want to be able to then share that with, with artists, uh, with individuals certainly, but we are thinking about packaging. Uh, we've been talking about uh, working with uh, singer-songwriters in Nashville, thinking about um, Neil's connected with the Hollywood Guild, making sure that some of these snippets and experiences are really going to outlets where they would be shared, um, as well as uh, providing potentially vignettes and stories about health that could go out to the community and be used for sparking and igniting conversation about health issues. So yes, we very much feel like uh, working in close collaboration with individuals outside of, of the Yale community to really understand many aspects and dimensions of public health issues is really critical. Thank you. Thank you.
so much for that presentation. Um, I'm, I'm on the staff at Dwight Hall at Yale, which is the Center for Public Service and Social Justice on campus. And in, in our experience, we've worked with so many community partners with grassroots arts initiatives and other things, um, as well as performers and artists, individuals, collectives, et cetera. And one of the challenges locally, and I suspect, and I know nationally as well, is that oftentimes arts organizations and grassroots artists struggle to obtain funding for a lot of their art. And they often feel pressure to associate art with something else. So it's art and youth development, art and health, art and uh, economic development, for instance. So how, how do you anticipate, um, do you anticipate that uh, your, your findings and your research will uh, provide some tools for organizations to be able to seek more stable and sustainable support? Or do you, and conversely, how do you anticipate uh, the challenge of this exacerbating that art and kind of challenge? Um, and then finally, as part of that, um, how, how do you consider kind of the cultural equity of, of, and the challenge of whose art gets Sure, no, those are great questions, and I think those are very much uh, issues that, that we are processing. I feel very fortunate that Tyga Christie, who is an in integral member of our team, b raises our awareness very much about these issues. Um, we, we are bringing artists into the class and making sure that all artists are compensated appropriately so that we, we also realize often in art, it's, it's almost as if it's supposed to be a volunteer activity or something, which we, we are very cognizant. It's, uh, I, as someone who's married to a violinist, I very much appreciate uh, the, the sphere of the artist. I think your, your question about dissemination and sharing and also sustainability are very much issues that we're, we're thinking about. I think, as I mentioned in response, the idea of the toolkit is to make some of these um, insights and thoughts and impressions from individuals and, and perspectives around public health issues available to artists. So the idea is that uh, we would like to provide information that could help them build their art, support their art. Uh, I think ultimately for us as a center, I very much want to think about uh, opportunities and resources to support development of art and sustainability of art. I mean, I think we would like to have artists in residence, but also ultimately I would very very much like to have resources that could go out to artists for pilot programs, uh, exhibits. So I think that uh, for, for us, a goal would be to provide resources as well. Um, I think what is exciting from my perspective as someone who's been in, in the research field, I am seeing more and more recognition of the importance of art in wellness, there is an epidemiologist, Daisy Fancourt, who's in the UK, who has really been looking at large data sets and demonstrating that exposure to art and engagement can be associated with preventive issues for, for health, uh, longevity, um, better mental health. Uh, there are also positive um, associations for children. So I think, um, you know, in the bigger picture, I think it would be to uh, continue to find resources to support those things and then think about interventions and programs that would then um, enable artists to be part of this sort of community health. Does that help answer the question? Thank Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your, for your wonderful presentation. Um, so I have a question that uh, falls from the last one as to um, if you could talk a little bit about if this initiative would also have some policy impact on Yale various, as a employee, uh, employer, because uh, they hire a lot of artists, but also, as you said, they, 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 they are hiring all sorts of people, including graduate students, but people who work in the services, um, and the defensive services, and of course, in, um, and I'm wondering if some of the findings that you are um, finding out and discovering are, is, are you in conversation also with those in, in the authority and on campus to make the lives of those who work here um, you know, align with the, the values? Okay, so if, if I'm understanding, the, the question is is a bit of um, bringing some of this work more to the Yale administration and staff. Is that, 
Yeah. So um, it's a great question. I think we're still at some early stages where we where we are working on sort of the education, the collaborations. I mean, I, I would anticipate that the programs we put forward are to be to the whole Yale community. So for example, the events that we're thinking about, um, for example, a um, a, fair, a, a health fair on sleep would be open to everybody. Um, how that might impact policy as far as staff, employees, I think we're not, I, I don't think we're there at this time, but I appreciate the perspective that it, again, if, if these are effective opportunities, interventions, exposures, we would like to initially here, you know, make them available to the entire Yale community. As we discover things and as more comes out about the evidence, I would hope that it would uh, certainly be something that we would bring forward to inform, you know, overall community health here within Yale as well. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you so much.